on World News Tonight. Continuing crisis, Myanmar civilians prepare for the worst as protesters turn to soldiers. Trade dispute, America demands accountability from China as financial repercussions land a heavy blow. COVID concerns, conversation around the new variant brings more alarm bells with countries struggling to stay afloat. Christmas Express, Colombia goes on a joyride as a magical train dazzles capital streets. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Ada Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Suzanne Shainali. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We start off today's coverage with updates in Myanmar. Young men and women in Myanmar say that they have left jobs in the city to become guerrilla fighters in the jungle. The new recruits learn how to load rifles and set detonators for homemade bombs as they prepare to battle the army behind the February 1st coup. Gunshots ring out at this makeshift shooting range deep in the forests of Myanmar. These civilians are learning how to fire live weapons as they prepare to battle a sizable, trained fighting force, Myanmar's own military. The junta staged a coup in February this year, ousting the civilian leader Aung San Suu Kyi from power. Hundreds of resistance groups have since popped up across the country. Rare footage of these young men and women, some former protesters who traded in their urban attire for jungle camouflage. And their numbers look to be growing, according to one former student activist turned fighter. Uh, there are over 100 youths here. More people are coming to us. In the village near our camp, there are also many youths staying there because they are insecure about living in urban areas or they want to join the army training camp or for any other reason. They fled to the jungle and shelter in nearby villages. Seclusion, however, has come with its challenges. Mud pots, waterways and days of trekking have made access to food a problem. But the rebels still persist. Everyone came here with their resentment and revolutionary spirit, so that is why they can only focus on fighting for revolution. That fight may continue to weigh heavily on the resistance, as close to 1,300 civilians have been killed and more than 10,000 arrested since the coup. The leaders of France and Germany sought to revive talks with Russia while keeping up pressure on Moscow to deter what the West says may be preparations for a new attack on Ukrainian territory. Russia's soldiers are deployed on the Ukrainian border and the EU wants to prevent any incursion. It's threatening Moscow with new sanctions. The message is very clear. Should Russia take further aggressive actions against Ukraine, the costs will be severe and the consequences serious. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, who met with EU officials in Brussels, says the bloc must act faster. Applying sanctions after a potential attack from Russia would be too late. We are interested in a powerful sanctions policy before a possible escalation, and this, I believe, could prevent an escalation. The EU is divided on what kind of powerful sanctions it could take to impact Russia. Its previous measures did not stop the Russians from annexing Crimea and staying in territories they occupy in Ukraine. Meanwhile, President Vladimir Putin has not reacted to EU threats but turned directly to Washington. His goal is to stop NATO from deploying troops any closer to Russia. Moscow has communicated to the U.S. administration its security conditions from backing off from the border. The United States is turning up the heat on China over its alleged systematic and widespread human rights abuses. It includes legislation that bans imports of numerous products made in China's Xinjiang province. Washington has imposed fresh sanctions on numerous Chinese entities, further ratcheting up pressure on Beijing. The U.S. Commerce Department explained in a statement Thursday that it's adding another dozen Chinese research institutes that use biotechnology processes to support China's military and users. 
It added technology that could be used to save lives is instead used by Beijing to pursue control over its people and repress ethnic and religious minority groups. The Biden administration has also imposed sanctions on Chinese painkiller manufacturers, stressing it would step up action to tackle the addiction epidemic that kills hundreds of Americans every day. The Treasury Department said the sanctions target four Chinese chemical companies and an individual. Moreover, the U.S. Senate has given final congressional approval to a bill that bans imports from China's Xinjiang region unless businesses can prove they were produced without forced labor. The U.S. measures are the latest in a series of intensified penalties on China's alleged human rights abuses in Xinjiang. Last week, the White House said the U.S. would stage a diplomatic boycott of the Beijing Winter Olympics, citing the country's, quote, egregious human rights abuses and atrocities in Xinjiang. We have some good news for you. Uganda is delivering HIV medicine by drone in an archipelago in Lake Victoria, a pilot program aiming to improve the transport of medical supplies for the country's health system, which faces chronic shortages. Get your HIV medicine via drone delivery. That's the plan in Uganda, where this pilot program is being trialled around Lake Victoria. It delivers HIV drugs from a hospital to patients in rural hamlets in Kalangala, an 84-island archipelago. If successful, it may be adopted on a larger scale to help to improve delivery of drugs and medical supplies for Uganda's public health care system, which faces understaffing and shortages of basic medicines and supplies. Project coordinator Joan Akulo explains the challenges she's faced in the past. I personally have also been here in Kalangala for the last four years, had also faced a lot of challenges to the point of almost drowning in water. So the drones project was actually uh, brought to Kalangala to overcome the geographical challenges that are faced by the health workers together with the, the patients, mostly HIV positive patients. The trial is funded by pharmaceutical company Johnson & Johnson and run by the government-run Infectious Diseases Institute. The drones can fly in winds of up to 15 meters per second and in heavy rain, although the research team is restricting this to 5 meters per second and light and medium rain to be safe. Other African countries like Ghana and Rwanda are already using drones to improve healthcare delivery. This trial program will last until June when it will be assessed. It's only delivering antiretrovirals for now. But Rosalind Parks Ratanshi, director of the Academy for Health Innovation, says that could change. We also are looking at other, um, putting other things in the drone. Because the drone lands, it can be loaded with samples. So maybe we can test for HIV uh, viral load. Maybe we can look at TB samples. We're also starting to look at COVID samples um, in the West Nile region. The latest on the COVID crisis right after this break. You're watching World News. Welcome back. The G7 called the Omicron variant the biggest current threat to the global public health, saying its emergency was meant was more important than ever for countries to closely cooperate. With fear mounting in Europe over the spread of the Omicron variant, the EU's 27 heads of state are rushing to coordinate a block-wide response to this latest phase of the COVID-19 pandemic. The highly infectious strain could become the European continent's most dominant by mid-January. Some countries like Germany and Austria have made clear that vaccination is key to tackling the threat. In Austria, inoculation will be mandatory from February the 1st, the first EU country to impose such a measure, while neighbouring Germany is edging closer to it. There is concern that strict new measures across Europe will undermine the EU COVID certificate that since July has facilitated travel within the bloc. Member states, the Republic of Ireland, Portugal, Italy and Greece are now demanding a negative test result for EU arrivals, even for those who are vaccinated. Elsewhere, France is introducing drastic new travel restrictions for arrivals from the UK starting at the weekend, with limits on non-essential travel and changes to the pre-arrival test requirements. Travellers arriving in France will also be required to self-isolate for seven days, though isolation will be lifted after 48 hours if a test conducted in France is negative. 
The CDC finalized its vote with an external panel on opting to provide Pfizer and Moderna jabs over the Johnson & Johnson jab due to the increased risk in possible blood clots, which may lead to the lethal results. A panel of outside advisors to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control on Thursday recommended Americans receive either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines over Johnson & Johnson's dose due to rare but sometimes fatal cases of blood clotting that have been reported in recipients of J&J's shot. The CDC itself still needs to sign off on the guidance. But the agency did say incidents of blood clots are higher in both men and women than has been previously reported, with the highest rates in women under 50. The CDC has said at least nine people in the U.S. have died following blood clotting incidents. Members of the advisory panel also said J&J's vaccine is less effective in preventing COVID-19 than the other two authorized vaccines. In a presentation to the panel, a leading J&J scientist said the vaccine generates a strong and long-lasting immune response with just a single shot. J&J's vaccine uses a modified version of a virus to spur immunity in recipients, while Pfizer and Moderna use messenger RNA or mRNA technology that makes proteins to trigger an immune response. J&J's one-dose vaccine received emergency use authorization in March. In April, U.S. regulators paused administering the vaccine for 10 days in order to investigate the blood clotting. A CDC scientist on Thursday said that the rate of deaths from the clots did not decrease after the pause in April. According to CDC data, around 16 million Americans received J&J's vaccine out of more than 200 million fully vaccinated people. The fear factor of the COVID pandemic has continued to rise in America as the holiday season is met with a larger surge of cases due to Omicron, causing increasing rates of unemployment and other concerns. Americans face an uncertain and anxiety-filled holiday season for the second consecutive year as the highly contagious Omicron variant threatens to intensify an already alarming surge of COVID-19 cases. Several Broadway shows have been forced to close, big employers are sending people home, professional sports teams are scrambling to contain outbreaks, and holiday parties are getting canceled again. At the White House Thursday, U.S. President Joe Biden was back to wearing a mask indoors and warned that the Omicron variant is going to spread rapidly and that a bleak winter awaits the unvaccinated. We are looking at a winter of severe illness and death for unvaccinated. Public health officials are worried that hospitals, still fighting the effects of the Delta variant, could find themselves stretched beyond their limits. According to a Reuters tally, over the past month, new cases have risen nearly 40 percent to 121,000 new infections per day. Deaths are up 18 percent and COVID hospitalizations are up 45 percent. Mayor Bill de Blasio said New York City would distribute a million free masks and 500,000 at-home tests. It is clear that the Omicron variant is here in New York City in full force. And we are announcing a series of measures to address this situation. Obviously, we knew Omicron was here and we knew it was going to be more of a presence in our city. It's now quite clear that it is. In South Africa, the United Kingdom and Denmark, the number of new Omicron infections has been doubling every two days. Britain recorded nearly 80,000 new cases on Wednesday, its highest single-day total since the pandemic began, and officials there have warned that hospital admissions could soon hit record levels. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the top U.S. infectious disease expert, said on Thursday that the Omicron variant would soon dominate infections in the United States. Preliminary data suggests Omicron may be more contagious than Delta, but less likely to cause severe illness, though much remains unknown. Research also indicates that the two-dose vaccine regimens have vastly reduced protection against Omicron, but that a third booster dose restores much of the vaccine's efficacy. Children aged 5 to 11 were vaccinated against COVID-19 in the European Union as half a dozen countries launched campaigns amid soaring infections and fears about the rapid spread of the new Omicron variant. Let's cross over to other than our world news special correspondent Chetana Dharmaratan reporting from Normandy in France. For more, Chetana. Yes, Shanali. 
The campaign is a test of parents' willingness to inoculate their children as government seek to avoid the mass hospitalization of previous waves. The first special adapted pediatric vials and syringes for smaller doses of the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine arrived in the region this week. Around 27 million, 5 to 11 years old, are eligible for the vaccine in the EU, and most countries want to move fast. While most children do not become seriously ill from the coronavirus, they can unwittingly infect others higher risk. France, Finland and Germany, where spectism is relatively common, we are vaccinating only the most vulnerable children rather than seeking blanket coverage. This comes as France's healthcare system buckles under the pressure of surging infections. Back to you, Shanali. All right, thank you. That was Adhidhar in a World News Special Correspondent Chetan and Dharmaratna reporting from Normandy in France. France will ban non-essential travel to and from Britain from the weekend to slow the spread of the Omicron COVID-19 variant that is causing record numbers of cases on the other side of the channel. Like many countries, the United Kingdom is bracing for an Omicron winter. England's chief medical officer warned on Wednesday the number of cases would continue to break records after the UK recorded more than 78,000 new infections. I am afraid there will be an increasing number of Omicron patients going into the NHS, going into hospital, going into intensive cares, uh, and the exact ratios we don't yet know, but th there will be substantial numbers. In response to rising Omicron cases in Britain, France said it would ban non-essential travel to the country starting Saturday. Incoming travellers will also need to take a PCR test 24 hours before entry, instead of 48. Across the Atlantic, Canada advised citizens against non-essential international travel and said more public health measures would be introduced. To those who were planning to travel, I say very clearly, now is not the time to travel. The rapid spread of the Omicron variant on a global scale makes us fear the worst for Canadians that may think of travelling. On Thursday, Indonesia reported its first Omicron case in someone who hadn't recently travelled overseas. The World Health Organization says it's likely the new variant is already present in most countries. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. The WHO has made interim recommendations for mixing and matching COVID-19 vaccines for both second doses and booster shots. The global health body said in an interim report that Pfizer and Moderna vaccines can be used as subsequent doses after initial doses of AstraZeneca's vaccine and vice versa. The top infectious disease expert in the United States is calling for the development of a universal coronavirus vaccine and stressed the need to develop a universal vaccine that could protect against a variety of ailments. For the 17th straight year, the UN has adopted a resolution on North Korea's human rights abuses, condemning its systematic and gross human rights violations. Communities in Somalia's Gal Gadot region face a grim future as intensified fighting between the government forces and militia groups and a worsening drought pushed thousands to leave their homes in search of food, water and pasture. India's border security force and border guards Bangladesh organized a joint beating retreat program to celebrate the 50th anniversary of their joint victory over Pakistan in the 1971 war. Meta is calling out half a dozen of private surveillance companies for hacking for other abusers, accusing them of collectively targeting about 50,000 people across Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp. Meta is cracking down on so-called cyber mercenaries. On Thursday, the owner of Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp said it's banned seven private surveillance companies from its platforms and suspended 1,500 related accounts, most of them fake. Among them, a European company called Cytrox and Israeli firms Cobwebs Technologies and also Black Cube, which deployed spies on behalf of disgraced Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein. Meta said it sent alerts to 50,000 people, telling them they may have been targeted. The company accuses the seven surveillance firms of hacking or using fake profiles to trick users into revealing private data. 
In a statement, Black Cube said it did not undertake any phishing or hacking, while Cobweb said it drew on open sources and that its products, quote, are not intrusive by any means. Other firms named could not be immediately reached for comment. Meta's announcement comes on the heels of a high-profile crackdown on spy firms like Israel's NSO Group, recently blacklisted by the U.S. government. The company hopes its ban will send a signal that the surveillance for hire industry is much bigger than just one company. It's also warned it will take action against other such companies when it finds them. Just hours after Meta's announcement, Twitter followed up with its own, saying it had removed 300 accounts from its platform. And finally tonight, Colombia's capital looked like a scene out of a Christmas movie as the multicolored lights of the Christmas train illuminated the streets of Bogota. The train's manager, Andres Rodriguez, says that besides being a publicity event, the attraction also helps bring joy to the people of Bogota. He added that people always come out to see it passing by every night. Staff dressed up as train conductors, nutcrackers and Santa Claus greet the passengers at the train station. The Christmas train will be operating all through December. Last year, the traditional Christmas tour was cancelled due to COVID-19 pandemic. In case you have missed to watch any of our stories we add tonight, you can re-watch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Join us again on Monday with another edition of World News. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Until then, stay safe and have a good night.